This tool relies on a sheet protector and six color copies. One, the current boundary map, essentially the answer key to the puzzle we're posing the students, and then data sets. The data sets vary in complexity and relevance to the task at hand. One data set, for instance, is the magnetic patterns. This is a very complex data set that we want to reserve to the end of our discussion. It won't necessarily help us build our model, but will allow us to refine it. Seafloor Age is a terrific data set. The plate boundaries here are actually very well identified as red divergent boundaries. We're going to save this towards the end too. I'm going to put that deeper in my stack, which leaves me with three data sets, volcanoes, seafloor map, and earthquakes to choose from. The order here doesn't matter. I'm going to start with seafloor map on the top because it provides the least amount of information and then work through volcanoes and earthquakes sequentially. So I'll assemble the tool and the only consideration here is that the end lines up. They slide all the way in so that the maps when we pull sheet after sheet are on top of each other. I don't know where to start. How does a map of the sea floor reveal evidence for plate boundaries? Well, as I look at the sea floor, I see that it's, it's not smooth and, and there are bumps and potentially these bumps have something to do with plate boundaries. It's quite likely that I have, as a student, heard that the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is one such boundary. Let's start by identifying where we are so that we can find the Atlantic. This is North America. I recognize that shape. I live in Texas. That's right here in the beautiful city of Fort Worth. South America. Africa. The Arabian subcontinent. The Indian subcontinent. Europe. Asia. And over here, Australia. Which one is missing? Antarctica. So the Atlantic separates North America from Europe and I see what looks like a faint line, a ridge. Let's zoom in on that and, and see if we can take a, a closer look. Stretching from Iceland, there's a line that I can trace that travels down and around reflecting the great boundary that split these continents apart. Now I might be able to successfully trace this even deeper into the southern Atlantic or maybe not. I see some things here that are kind of weird. I see a ridge here. What other features? Well, I notice that the continents in the seafloor form an edge, and, and to be truthful, I, I don't know whether I should draw this in as a dotted line or not. I'm going to ask that question later. And so what I'll do as we pan out, do I use this edge as a border as well? I'm not sure. I'm going to make myself a note up in this corner of the sheet to come back and think about this, the edge. What other features do I see? Let's switch to the Pacific. And in the Pacific I see a lot of things going on. This to me looks like a feature, but it could be an edge. This certainly looks like a set of trenches. It's a different contrast. I'm going to mark that one. And then as I sneak down above New Zealand, I, I see something that looks like an edge here. Is this all the map is telling us? Probably not, but that's all that I can see easily. And so I'm going to start with this as a data set for my model and say that maybe these are the edges that are important. So here's my map. This is what I'm convinced is the data set from seafloor. But I might come back to that. So I'm going to slide this one out 
I'm going to make sure that the edge on this side is still flush so that my lines overlap. And then I'm going to ask the question, how do volcanoes influence my identification of plate boundaries? So there are volcanoes everywhere. And so let's zoom in and look at some of the areas of volcanoes. And for volcanoes, I'm going to choose a, a different color of marker. As I zoom in, as I zoom in, what I identify are volcanoes as yellow spots. Here's some volcanoes in the Caribbean. I'm going to identify them like that. Here's some volcanoes along what I previously identified was my ridge. Now, there are others that aren't on my ridge, and I don't honestly know how to deal with that right now. Look at these sets of volcanoes down here. If we look at these sets of volcanoes down here and into Antarctica, I gain some confidence that maybe that feature is real. Let's work our way up the coast of South America. As we work our way up the coast of South America, there are a lot of volcanoes to be seen. Let's complete the data compilation. If I was wondering whether my edge was uh, a relevant border, this suggests to me, or maybe at least in this case, that that's correct. As I trace these volcanoes around, I get the ring of fire. Again, maybe that continental ocean edge is relevant. Here's some of the most compelling data that I'm collecting. Look at this. All these volcanoes essentially match this line that I've drawn earlier. There's a little bit of an offset there. Maybe I don't know exactly how to interpret that feature. Or maybe my sheet wasn't lined up correctly. We'll have to wait and see. Here's some more volcanoes. Volcanoes string up these islands. Volcanoes around this side as well. Up this feature. Boy, this really is starting to look like a boundary. There are volcanoes, though, that aren't anywhere near these black lines. The data doesn't overlap. I wonder what that says about my model. It's actually those sorts of questions that are the most important to get to. I'm going to shift over here to Africa real quickly and identify that there's a huge volcanic belt through here. I'm going to identify that there's a volcanic belt through there as well. I wonder what those mean. Let's look for some more data. Let's elaborate this model with evidence from earthquakes. Again, keep the edges tight. I'm going to pull this sheet, and here's my earthquake data. Now these earthquake data are coded in two different ways. One of the ways is the depth of the earthquake. So these yellow uh, cir concentric circles represent a shallow earthquake, and the red circles, like these off the coast of Japan, represent a deep earthquake. And again, at some point, students will recognize that these are actually clues to the types of plate boundaries. But let's look at the data first. I'm going to zoom out to my entire map and start putting in earthquake data. And just like the volcanic data, not all of these data points will line up and will ask us to question the model. And again, if we can get to the point where we're questioning the model, like this earthquake in the center of the US, we're demonstrating, I think, deeper understanding. All right, so where is the earthquake data? I'm going to just put green dots throughout the site of earthquakes. I see them localized along this edge, which I might now consider going back and putting in as black to represent a topological feature. It most certainly is, as well as the data from volcanoes. I've got earthquakes all along here, the San Andreas Fault. I've got earthquakes all along here. I've got earthquakes, wow, the same thing over and over. I'm starting to see a pattern. And it's this pattern recognition that emerges. Is this a pattern or not? What's going on here? All these earthquakes through central China. Hmm, that's new. I do recognize some terrestrial topological features, the mountain ranges there. Earthquakes. 
earthquakes all along the top. Again, reinforcing that this might actually be a real boundary. I've got some earthquakes off to the side over here. I may not know how to interpret those. And I've got earthquakes in this belt across the Pacific. What about the Atlantic? Well, again, this little feature down here seems to be sticking out with my earthquake data. I'm starting to think that given the overlap of topology, earthquake, and volcano, that's probably real. What about earthquakes along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge? Well, it's not a surprise that they exist. There are a lot of transform boundaries there as well. And finally, as we sweep over to this side of the map, I'm seeing earthquakes along here. I'm definitely starting to see patterns. I think I could start taking some guesses at major plate areas, but distinct plate boundaries are still a little bit elusive. What's another data set that we might use? Let's get rid of the earthquake data set and come to what is probably the most compelling data that we're going to see in terms of the seafloor. This is seafloor age. The red shows young seafloor. The blue and purple are the oldest seafloor of all. It's these divergent boundaries that are defined by red lines that will allow us to actually come back and finally identify um, borders between plates. Let's, let's try that right now. So I'm going to use the color blue to trace these divergent boundaries from one side of the map to the other. It stops there. I wonder exactly what that means. And I'm starting to notice that it is mimicking the topological features, the volcanic activity, and the earthquakes. It's a border up here. A border there. Look at this curious feature. It does look real. It looks like a series of divergent boundaries. As I come across this way, I recognize a feature that runs along this part of the coast. There's red. And then across the bottom. There seems to be some red along some of these areas. I think that's part of my model. There's a shade of yellow here. I'm not sure how to interpret it. I certainly recognize a boundary there. Here's a curious one. Right there. Hmm. This area where I've identified volcano volcanic activity doesn't appear to be a divergent boundary. I'm going to slide this out just to make sure that I'm not missing any color. No, nope, it doesn't appear to be. I do see a little bit of yellow and green. I wonder, I wonder exactly what that means. All right. So where does this leave us? Well, we're developing a pretty clear map of the plate boundaries uh, on the planet. Let's look at one last data set, magnetic patterns. Now, magnetic patterns are actually really remarkable things, and they're oftentimes not covered in the 6th and 8th grade bands, mainly due to the complexity of the data. It turns out that the north and south poles on the planet switch every so often and stay switched until they switch back. And as rocks are made and solidify and crystallize, magnetic materials in that rock will actually tell you where the North Pole was at the time the rock was formed. And so if we 
zoom in on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, we see something really quite remarkable. We see patterns of color that are symmetric across the ridge because as rock comes up and crystallizes, it will point to the North Pole, at least magnetic rock will, and then as it travels outward, new rock will form, and if the magnetic pole switches, and now I'm short some fingers, as the magnetic pole switches, the new rock that crystallizes along the ridge will point a different way. And so what we expect to see along divergent boundaries is evidence of that switching, and that's indeed what we see along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. We can convince ourselves that there is a symmetry to both the banding patterns across the ridge as well as the colors. What we see in the Pacific is a little bit more troubling, and it's probably a good thing that we started collecting data in the Atlantic where everything made sense. The patterns on the Pacific are much, much harder to identify. There are evidences of divergent boundary. There's a nice banding pattern here that's symmetric. But what in the world is going on here? This is a place for the next generation of scientists. Probably, or potentially, someone in your classroom. All right, let's look at the answer. I'm going to pull this last sheet and see how well my prediction actually aligned with plate boundaries. We're actually pretty close. I'm going through and using black to trace those plate boundaries. Boundary, look at this, look at this crack. I wonder if a new plate's forming. How does that happen? I wonder if we're gonna get tiny little micro plates like the ones I saw over here. Hmm. Again, it's a place for science. And this next generation of scientists. So I'm gonna finish tracing, be a little bit more careful. What what's what's going on here? Is that a border or not? Look at all the stuff going on here. I am now in a position to actually label these major plates. The Australian Indian plate is pretty easy to identify. It starts on this side of the map and stretches all the way across to this side. The African plate to identify. The Eurasian plate stretches across. Don't forget this top here, and the North American plate is this remaining region. It's the top of the globe. In fact, the North Pole falls on the North American plate. What about the North American to South American plate? Where is the boundary? Again, it's a place for science. The data doesn't easily define this boundary. Just like this one, the data doesn't easily define the border between the North American plate and the Eurasian plate. We're not exactly sure where that line is. Again, it's a place for the next generation of scientists, the next generation of geologists and geophysicists. I hope you've enjoyed the tool. On the web, there will be some additional discussions of the leading questions uh, that appear on the bottom of each page.